Good afternoon, good evening, uh, depending on where you are joining us today. My name is Sana Nelson and I am the Alumni Relations Officer working for Alumni and Family Relations uh, at RISD. Uh, I am very happy to be able to uh, welcome you on this virtual event, which is a uh, one hour summer welcome event, an event where you have uh, parents, uh, alumni, and uh, a current student give you a sense of what their experience at RISD has been and help answer the, your questions. This is a recorded event. So similarly to the past summer welcome events we have held during this month, uh, the recording will be made available later and feel free if you feel like you missed something to take a listen at the time. Um, we have had over 60 people, uh, both students and uh, families sign up for this uh, event and um, people from a number of countries, actually seven uh, international uh, uh, participants coming from uh, Canada, the, uh, uh, Dubai, Chile, China, Colombia, and Ghana. And uh, from the registration list, there were uh, 17 different states uh, rep represented in this group. But uh, we want to know more about you. So we will be asking uh, in a little bit uh, uh, to know where you are all coming from. But first, a big, big welcome. We are so happy to be able to uh, organize this, uh, to introduce you to RISD, to welcome you to this uh, wonderful community. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will start by quickly sharing this agenda, which I welcome, and then providing you with uh, data on uh, the incoming class. And then we will start our uh, speaking engagement with uh, uh, each speaker sharing about their experience. And then we will spend the last 20 minutes or so with uh, um, a Q&A period where you will be able to type in the Q&A function of the webinar your questions and we will answer them either uh, uh, individually or out loud uh, to the whole group. Uh, but uh, so please hold it. You can type your questions at any time, but we will answer them uh, during the last portion. And uh, now let me tell you a little bit about the incoming class um, this year. So for the undergraduate class, we received 5,431 applications. So we are welcoming 515 first year students. That is a 16% acceptancy rate for the school and it does include 2020 deferrals in terms of where our students are coming from international students are coming from 20 different countries with top countries represented being china india south korea canada and taiwan and from 35 different states with as you can see top being uh, new york california massachusetts new jersey and texas so i'll be curious to see if uh, those top uh, states and countries are represented in uh, this group attending the event and 49 percent of uh, students actually uh, come from a group they consider as a minority in terms of the graduate incoming class for the fall of 2021, we had 2,057 applications and 305 uh, uh, applicants were uh, accepted and will be starting in the fall. That means that we had a 32% acceptancy rate. Uh, graduate students are coming from New York, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Texas, from China, India, South Korea, Canada, and the UAE. 22% of admitted students come from historically underrepresented groups, and 21% of the enrolled students come from historically underrepresented groups. And now, as I had mentioned, we want to know where you're coming from. So could you please type in the chat function where you're coming from? Uh, and then I'll, it will be an opportunity to shout out those uh, countries or states. Um, Okay, Jordan, Colombia, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, Canada. So we're having Massachusetts, we're having a number of international uh, students on, wonderful. Ohio, uh, Canada, New York. 
And I have to say that our speakers will be saying where they're coming from, but just so that you know they represent California and uh, New York and India. Um, but they'll share more about that. And now let me move on to uh, welcoming uh, Jane Perini to uh, the floor. Uh, Jen is from California. She's a member of the Family Association Leadership Council, and she has a student uh, who is currently studying graphic design and expected to graduate in 2023. And now with no further ado, Jen. Hello there. Um... Yes, my name is Jen Perini. Thank you, Sana. Um, and my daughter's name is Maeve Cunningham. Um, she is actually a double major in graphic design and industrial design. So that means she's going to be at RISD for five years. She'll be starting the fourth of the five years um, this fall. Um, so welcome um, to the RISD Families Association. We are very excited to have you join us today. Um, as a member of an incoming RISD student, you're automatically part of the RISD Families Association. Uh, RISD families have engaged in different ways, such as supporting incoming families through mentorship. Uh, that program is called the Ambassador Program, uh, hosting or speaking at RISD events, and um, suggesting opportunities, uh, internship opportunities for students. Um, and there's a lot more ways to be involved. Uh, the Family Association Leadership Council has also created initiatives to help answer the needs of our students, such as the Materials Fund to help students cover the cost of art supplies. Uh, last year, RISD's in, RISD increased its programming for families, creating a family-specific website that seeks to help families find the information they need quickly. We encourage you to take a look by starting at the Summer Welcome Events page on the families.risd.edu website. Uh, RISD also started a quarterly family newsletter and webinar series to help families support their students. If you do not already receive, did not already receive the family newsletter, we encourage you to sign up to receive the newsletters. Recordings of past webinars are also available on the family's website under the connect section. So just to share a little bit about my own experience as a RISD parent, um, uh, I'm in, we're in San Francisco now, but I grew up in Boston um, and uh, where RISD is, was a household name. Um, I think it's a household name a lot of other places now, but uh, this was a long time ago. And I remember in my high school in Boston that um, noticing that many of the coolest, most creative and sort of unique kids ended up going to RISD. Um, so it was kind of on my radar, but I never, um, you know, since I've never considered myself an artistic person, um, I never dreamt that one day I have a child of my own um, that attended uh, RISD. Um, so again, her name is Maeve. She's a rising senior in industrial design and graphic design. Um, I have to say, I've been so impressed by the quality of education that Maeve has received, uh, not only in the studio classes, but in the lecture and liberal arts classes as well. She has loved her professors and gotten to know a few of them quite well. Two of them even asked her to TA for them in later classes, um, which by the way, is something she highly recommends to other students um, and to pays. Uh, she currently lives off campus with four other RISD students, two painters, a photographer, and an apparel designer. Um, and there is this great kind of cross-disciplinary, um, mutual inspiration kind of thing that happens between them as they all bring their different talents and perspectives to the mix. I think this is really unique about RISD um, uh, versus other kinds of colleges. Um, uh, I love how these kids are always helping with each other's projects, whether it be modeling a fashion design or in a photo shoot or doing manual labor or just lending moral support um, for those long nights in the studio. Um, during COVID, Maeve was home here in San Francisco for a couple of months, and I got to watch some online lectures over her shoulder, and I was blown away by the richness and depth of the material and the investment of time and care by her professors. They clearly love their jobs. Also, a side note about COVID, um, I was so impressed by how RISD and President Summerson handled the pandemic. The communication about what the school was doing and why was always clear and thorough and very regular. Uh, I have two other college age kids at different schools and RISD's communication and transparency was the best by far. Um, this summer, Maeve is working for a jewelry and accessories designer in Manhattan. And after that, she'll start senior year. 
Um, and I'm really kind of sorry to see her RISD experience coming to a close, um, but I'm also really excited to see how things unfold for her. And I know the education she's received at RISD and the relationship she's made here um, have provided the best possible foundation for whatever she decides to pursue. Um, so just to wrap up my little bit here, um, I asked Maeve to share about her experience in her own words, and this is what she said. RISD is like nowhere else. RISD studio classes are intensive and unlike any traditional schooling. They teach you how to think abstractly and operate individually. And best of all, you are surrounded by the most creative, interesting people in the world. So um, with that, um, again, thank you so much for joining us and I will hand it back to, uh, to you, Sana. Thank you, Jen. This is great. And I really appreciate the, the mention of the TA opportunities. I know, I know a number of our speakers actually have had the opportunity to be TAs and I've heard from everyone that uh, those were fantastic opportunities uh, to make money, but also to grow and uh, learn some leadership skills. Anyway, I'm talking too much. We wanted to have a poll to be able to hear more from you. If you were on a deserted island, what is the one art supplies you would bring with you? Charcoal and a sketchbook, a chisel, straight edge ruler, a video camera, or paintbrushes and color? And I feel that in a way that Paul gives us a bit of a sense of what the incoming group uh, joining RISD is interested in and is thinking about uh, as uh, they get ready for September. So let's give it maybe just a little bit less than a minute. So if you have not had a chance to uh, put in your own opinion, please do so. Seems like no one is picking the straight edge ruler, but charcoal and sketchbook one. Awesome, lots of people ready to uh, sketch. I have to say in a number of the events we held uh, in uh, the past during this month, we had video camera uh, winning, but uh, not this time. And now I would like to uh, move on to the next portion of our event where I am introducing Jane Huang from uh, New York. She is a 2011 architecture graduate uh, and she is also part of the alumni club of New York. She is the co-chair of that club. Uh, it is important to us uh, to have our club leaders uh, welcome you because um, your experience at RISD doesn't really end when uh, you graduate from the school. You have many opportunities to stay involved uh, uh, and uh, continue to grow uh, with the school. So with no further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Jane on stage. Hi. Hi, Sana. Thank you for uh, the introduction. Uh, my name is Jane and I am the co-chair of the RISD New York Alumni Club. And I was given this opportunity to be part of the New York City Club in the fall of 2019. And we were able to host two events be in the beginning of 2020, be right before the pandemic. And for these events, we tried to create a comfortable networking environment for the alums and also for classmates that don't normally get the chance to see each other environment to catch up and um, have drinks. So currently we are brainstorming to have an event at uh, in the city as it's opening up um, in the summer, end of summer and um, early fall this year. Um, my story of how I ended up at RISD started from, I grew up in a family of scientists and doctors. They did not understand much about the art school. So it was not a chosen path for me growing up at all. Um, it took a lot of persuasion for me to attend RISD, but I think one of the big um, winning point for RISD was our ability to take any Brown classes as we wish, and compared to other art schools like Parsons and Pratt, which were also my top choices. Um, growing up in New Jersey, I went to Parsons for pre-college during high school. I chose to go to RISD because the campus environment, and I felt like it was the closest to a regular college experience and while doing something that I'm passionate about, which is art and design. 
Risty has taught me to think outside of the box and has given me the confidence to trust in my intuition as a designer throughout my career. And as um, Jen and Senna mentioned, it's, I, I was also a TA. It's very good to TA. That's a great advice for everyone. Um, so yeah, while I was at RISD, I was an architecture major. I was able to me meet many amazing friends all, from all over the world. And I learned from amazing professors. Towards the end of my senior year, I had a German professor who was working in Beijing, which got me interested in working in China with all the work that was being done preparing for the Olympic and the Expo. After graduating RISD in 2011, I was quickly able to find a job in Philadelphia, but my heart was set on working in China. So I moved to China in the fall of 2012 to work for Arata Isosaki, an architect that I admire as a student. And from that opportunity led me to another great opportunity to work for um, Richard Rogers, a, another architect that I adore. Um, so while I was working at Rogers, I learned a lot about the city of London and was able to travel there quite often. So I ended up going to, I attended the Bartlett School of Architecture at University College London in the fall of 2016, majoring in architectural history. And during this time, I was still working at the Rogers London office. It seemed like my life has drifted from, the, from RISD after 2011, but I, while I was in Shanghai, I met an alum, a RISD alum who graduated from industrial design class of 2007. We did not know each other while we were in school, but we were able to quickly catch up and became friends. And we started the RISD Shanghai Alumni Club, which grew to became the Greater Shanghai, the Greater China Alumni Club today. And when I was in London going through some personal hardships, I had a great friend of mine from RISD who was also working in London at the time. And she became my greatest companion and travel buddy in Europe. These are, there's something about the RISD bond that it, it, it's a network that will always be there for you if you want to be part of. And as I speak from my personal experience now, when I moved back to the US in 2017, a friend of mine from RISD asked me to move in with her in Williamsburg, and I've been here ever since. So I guess, I guess this is why I'm a great advocate for the RISD community. I enjoy and have benefited greatly from lifelong friendships that I have built. And I wish to be able to pass on this, um, like this mutual understanding and um, trust that we built in the alumni clubs. And um, so welcome everybody to RISD and um, be part of this great community. Thank you so much, Jane. I do want to point out that uh, there are alumni clubs all over uh, the US and abroad. So, and this is a great opportunity to be able to connect uh, with alums, even as students, and to be able to ask questions. You might be interested in knowing about opportunities in uh, Seattle or in Portland, and there's alums from the clubs there who can help answer those questions. Um, it, uh, something I definitely recommend as well is joining the RISD network, which is a network where students are able to uh, go and ask, sign in and ask questions of other students or alumni about anything they have. It might be about a major, it might be about job opportunities. And now I would like to introduce uh, Jeffrey Cohen, who graduated in 1984 in graphic design and currently lives in California. Hi, Jeff. Maybe before you say something, Jeff, I do want to point out, just because I didn't mention it before, that uh, I hope you guys have all been looking at the chat because we have been putting our speakers' bios in the chat as uh, they speak. And now the floor is all you, yours, Jeff. Thank you, Sana. Um, all this talk about RISD really warms my heart um, when people feel so strongly about it as I do. Um, I want to thank RISD for inviting me to join this conversation. And I want to welcome all of the incoming students, parents, and others who are in the audience. Um, I was in the class of 1984, which meant my incoming class was in 1980. So I'm looking at this 
uh, from a slightly different, through a slightly different lens than more recent graduates. Um, I now live in Los Angeles and I am a senior designer at Getty Publications, which is part of the J. Paul Getty Trust. Uh, I've been here uh, for quite some time. And it's a wonderful uh, place to be. Um, I grew up in Philadelphia, which was uh, not far from Providence, is not far from Providence, but uh, it was just outside, I think, the, the area where RISD was drawing its core group of students at that time. I mean, there was no internet and uh, you had to order uh, actual physical catalogs of art schools and other colleges that you were interested in. And being in the Philadelphia area, I was looking at schools in Philadelphia and in New York. Um, but I had a, a high school art teacher who was very, very, felt very strongly about RISD. And she felt that that's where I should be. And uh, under her guidance, I applied and I was very lucky to get in. And uh, I, you know, I think that was a very important moment in my life. Um, when I started, our, our incoming class was 300 people. So it's smaller than the 500 people that are coming in th uh, this fall. Um, so it was small. And over the period of our freshman year, um, it was really one of the most exciting years of my life, just experiencing uh, the different voices different ideas, uh, different experiences that everybody brought to the community. And I think freshman year, as we all took the same track of classes, was even a, uh, created a tighter bond among us. Um, even after freshman year, when um, we all went into our own disciplines, there was something about that freshman year that really tied us together uh, as a group, as a core. Um, the foundation program was extra an extraordinary experience that brought two-dimensional design, three-dimensional design, art history, and all the other core classes to everybody. And so we were all in it together. Um, I found a tremendous amount of support, encouragement among my classmates, faculty, and administration. And as, as Jen was recalling Mave's feelings about uh, RISD, I felt the same way. The, um, the support among the RISD community is second to none. I mean, everybody's there and uh, to support one another, both creatively, emotionally, uh, every way possible. Um, I think what I took away from my freshman year was what I think is the really the core teachings of RISD, and that is how to see, how to see, how to think, and how to express your ideas. And uh, it's these ideas and tools that um, about problem solving and about seeing that I've taken with me and I use to this day on, on how to uh, work through problems or you know design problems that I might encounter in my practice. Um, and that's that's really, really important. And I, I look back at RISD and I think that uh, um, I, I apply what I've learned every day. And that freshman year was a very important moment uh, to craft those ideas. Um, I'll jump ahead a little bit. I mean, I did major in graphic design, but I'll jump ahead a little bit as a long time, a long time alum of RISD. And that is to say that RISD had opened many, many, many doors for me. Um, I was uh, my first job out of RISD was as a graphic designer at the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis. And it was through RISD that I was able to make those connections and uh, be hired and be at, at the most wonderful place uh, at that time in, contem in contemporary art in the United States. Um, and after Minneapolis, I landed here in California, Los Angeles, where I landed at the LA County Museum of Art for some time. And that too was through RISD doors and now at the Getty uh, Trust. And I think just uh, my work and the RISD community, that all built to where I am today. Um, as, a, as a longtime alum, I really want to acknowledge all the hard work and that RISD has done with their alumni. 
and the um, and in recent years, so when I first moved to California in 1987, there was just a handful of people there, uh, RISD alums here, and that has grown exponentially. And as Maria said, um, the chapters uh, around the country and around the world have grown. And here in Los Angeles, it's become a very robust organization where we have a chance to be social, where we have a chance to network, and we have a chance to share our, uh, share our work with one another. And that's a really, really important uh, time spent together with other RISD alumni. Um, again, I want to go back to what the, the RISD alum organization has done for me. Um, I have to say through the college's efforts to reaching out to us and to updating us on what is going on at the college, whether it is in coursework, uh, buildings and construction, uh, visions, everything else. Um, I've never felt closer to RISD than I do right now to its mission, to its core values and its future. And I'm very excited to be a part of that. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate that vote of confidence. And I have to say that uh, all alums I have uh, spoken to have shared the same and have shared as well how joining RISD at uh, the start as a first year student felt like going home because they felt like they were meeting that kinds of people. And then after graduating and working, being able to meet again with uh, RISD alums uh, as part of affinity groups or uh, regional clubs have felt the same way, being able to reconnect with a uh, affinity group. And Zach is uh, actually uh, part of an affinity club, which is another type of uh, club that uh, brings our uh, alums together and focus on specific interests. He is uh, the co-leader of the Immersive Experience Affinity Club. He graduated in uh, 2017 in graphic design and used to live in California, but has just relocated to uh, Boston, Massachusetts. And with no further ado, uh, Zach. Hey, uh, thanks for having me. Um, so as mentioned, I graduated from RISD in 2017 with a degree in graphic design, uh, and I'm a leader for the immersive design interest group. Um, and I formerly actually was a leader for the RISD LA alumni group, but I moved last month. So I'm, I can't really be part of that group anymore. <laughs> um, so when I was at RISD, um, I worked in many different jobs around campus. Uh, I worked in so many different areas like admissions, a type shop monitor, I was a gym monitor. Um, I worked in the career center, uh, but as, a couple of other people mentioned I was also a TA for RISD classes, uh, but I was also a TA for a Brown class in computer science as well. Um, I was also heavily involved in multiple uh, student groups around campus, uh, like being head of design at Hackett Brown, Brown University's Hackathon. I was president of the Queer Student Organization. I taught basic HTML and CSS workshops through RISD quickies. I was also an orientation leader and a peer mentor. Um, and I, I do think a lot of those things did graduate, uh, did kind of lead to me um, experiencing many different things, but also led through uh, to connections that I don't think I would have ever made otherwise. Uh, I moved to LA after I graduated with a job. Uh, I got a few months after graduation through connections I made while volunteering with those student groups um, and um, meeting folks uh, at some of the RISD careers events. Um, and this led me to join the AR and VR field as a fresh graduate, which almost never happens. Um, the, uh, and it was also something that I think my RISD experience really helped with um, because it helped me uh, it really helps me to be able to have the flexibility to think about things in the abstract and the undefined, um, something I don't think many college programs really teach you how to do. Um, and I think many jobs don't teach you how to do. Uh, so 
Um, I stayed in that job for four years in, in LA. Uh, and last November, I made the switch to working at Vicarious Surgical, where I now work under a RISD uh, alum. Uh, and I'm working on the future of surgical robots uh, with 3D screens and VR. Uh, so really, again, working on the cutting edge of technology. Um, big, uh, and I really kind of uh, thank my art school and RISD education uh, for letting me be able to do that, but also giving me the skills to be able to do uh, that kind of work. Um, being able to work with a lot of ambiguities and being able to design for things that don't exist yet. Um, and two months ago, I actually hired my first intern uh, and she's actually a recent RISD grad as well. Um, so you can kind of see how uh, not only the education has really led me to this point, but also the connections that I've made uh, while uh, kind of meeting other RISD alums. Um, yeah. Thank you, Zach. This was fantastic. And thank you for mentioning the Nature Lab. Uh, I know many of you on this uh, webinar might not have been able to see the Nature Lab in person. It was part of the one of the photos that uh, Zach shared with us, and it is really a fantastic resource that I would recommend uh, anyone jump in as soon as they're on campus and gets the opportunity to visit. As parents as well, you want to go visit that space. It is uh, fantastic and offers such amazing opportunities for uh, you know ways to look to turn an object look at it in different ways and uh, draw it and look at patterns and now I would like to uh, welcome Vedika Kushalani uh, Vedika is a student in architecture and she is specializing in adaptive reuse and interior studies she will be graduating in uh, 2022 and uh, has a lot to share about what uh, RISD currently looks like for a student. With no further ado, Vedika. Hi everyone, um, thank you Sana. Um, my name is Vedika and I'm a rising senior um, at RISD and um, I'm from India, but I grew up in Singapore um, and I'm currently working as an architectural intern in New York City. Um, so RISD has a very special place in my heart and um, for me, what I've learned from it is that it fosters a very unique um, kind of design and art education uh, with analytical and um, abstract um, kind of um, versions of it. And um, I've been involved in a bunch of activities and clubs that RISD has to offer. Like everyone else mentioned, I was, I, I was also a TA in my freshman and sophomore years. Um, I was an orientation leader and I'm a member of the Southeast Asian Student Association. And um, RISD has a number of different clubs and student groups that has already been mentioned um, that you can always be involved in. Um, and I was also um, taking classes in computer science at Brown. Um, and um, that's another great opportunity that I think RISD offers is taking cross registration between RISD and Brown. Um, and for me, my favorite part at RISD so far was the experimental and foundation studies program in, the, in our freshman year. Um, because it's a very immersive and inclusive um, environment and it brings together spatial dynamics, drawing and kind of design. Um, and it all comes together with the theory and history of art and design. So um, freshman year essentially gets you very close to your peers because you spend a lot of time in studio. Um, and I think Zach mentioned this, but um, I think the one thing that RISD has so far taught me um, is problem solving. And I'm really excited for the last one year that I have ahead. Um, and I also wanted to mention another unique kind of facet that RISD brings is um, win winter session. Um, so you get um, eight weeks um, every winter to kind of explore out of your major. So kind of um, exploring other departments that RISD has to offer, whether it's like glass blowing or uh, printmaking or painting. Um, and kind of just after when you're in your major, you have the kind of flexibility to explore the other facets that RISD has to offer. Um, so yeah, RISD is very special to me and I'm um, and hopefully we're completely back in person um, next semester. So welcome to RISD um, and it's a great place and I'm so excited for you guys to start your journey here. Thank you, Vedika. This was fantastic. And thank you for everyone for sharing your experience at uh, RISD. Um, I think it is very uh, inspiring 
to, to hear what the experience has been for many of our uh, RISD students that, for parents and uh, to see how they have stayed connected and what tools they um, they have been able to bring forward in their lives. Um, I have heard from many alums as well who have shared that part of uh, what they've learned in addition to being able to rethink their project through the CRIT process at RISD has been to look at how to pitch an idea to different groups of people. And this is why RISD has a tremendous number of uh, alumni who create, who start their own companies and uh, projects. But now I wanted to share a few uh, resources at RISD. Uh, I wanted to mention there are 70 plus student initiated clubs and organizations. Indeed, if, there's, if you're interested in a club and you don't see that it exists, then you can always reach out and say that you want to start such and such a club and uh, that's it. You can be given the tools to start it. Uh, I spoke to an alum who decided to start a cycling group and then that group was able to then compete with other schools. For example, uh, talking about athleticism, um, RISD students also have access to uh, the Brown facilities. Um, so that's always a good thing to know about. But uh, clubs uh, are in athletic nature, cultural, or cover all kinds of interests. I do want to point out RISD weekend, which is a weekend in October and uh, where we will have this year, last year we had to have all our programming remote, but this year we, will, we are planning to have in-person uh, activities on the Saturday, October 9th. And that will be an opportunity for parents to be able to come to campus and get a sense of what their students experience is like for the first time. We will also be able to have a number of uh, virtual events leading up to it but I highly encourage uh, all parents to come for RISD weekend. Uh, there will also be a sale called the RISD craft which is an opportunity for alumni and some current students to sell some of their uh, work and uh, RISD ball is a big dance that happens every year. I do not believe it has happened last year but that happens every year and is well known. So uh, once uh, the students are at RISD, please share the, your enthusiastic photos with your parents so that they have a sense of what this artist ball is like. Mm -hmm. And now I would like to also uh, share a, the website for the uh, families uh, relations. It's families.risd.edu. Uh, Jen Perini mentioned that uh, when she spoke, this is a website that was created last year as a way for uh, families to be able to find all information about RISD in one spot. I know that RISD has many websites and sometimes it can be difficult. So we encourage you to uh, go to uh, the, our family family's website because then you will be able to access information on let's say dining or on uh, resources available uh, to support uh, your students in terms of academics or have access to uh, learn ways to get engaged as a parent. We have a number of committees uh, and we're always uh, interested in getting the input from parents on what they find would be helpful and resourceful for them as they want to support their students. Uh, we also post there our web, the recordings of our webinars. And uh, every year we hold a certain number of webinars that help parents get a sense of what uh, the RISD experience is like. In order to be uh, able to get all the information uh, about webinars and our newsletters, et cetera, we ask you to please uh, update your uh, contact information to know about those upcoming events. And you can do that through the family's uh, website. And um, now I did want to mention as well for our incoming families, the ambassador program, which is a program where we connect incoming families who have questions about uh, uh, the RISD experience with families uh, of students who are juniors or seniors and will be able to help answer questions about, you know, majors or what winter session is like, or, you know, how do I mail information? How often should I connect with my student because now my student is away at college having their own independent experience. So if you're interested in that program, again, go to the family's website and click on the ambassador program and complete the form to share that you're interested in getting some support.
And now uh, we have a couple of uh, photos of campus uh, because uh, I know you guys have probably seen a number of our tours of campus, but Taylor Guest was likely not on any of those videos. Taylor Guest is a property that RISD owns about uh, 20 minutes away from Providence in a suburb called Barrington. And it's a fantastic space where students can kind of decompress and go walk on the beach. They, there's a huge grass lawn where they can sit and uh, paint or sketch. Uh, it is is definitely a place to visit uh, when you're on campus to resource yourself. And other spot is the uh, RISD Museum. And the RISD Museum has a number of um, resources available to students as they're doing uh, research and work on different issues. But uh, it is also just a beautiful museum to visit. And, uh, you know, this, the, uh, this Buddha is in a room all on his own. And it is a very peaceful room. So again, if you want to resource yourself, go visit the Buddha. I know this is an activity that a number of students uh, do. And uh, now I think we're about to open our the floor for questions and answers. So uh, if you have questions, please go to the Q&A uh, feature and type those questions. And then I will we will either answer them directly or I will say them out loud and invite uh, speakers to respond. But before I do that, I do want to mention, so a big portion of this event is really to for you to be able to hear from our students, alumni, and parents about the experience at RISD and asking them questions about that experience. Um, staff is also organizing a number of other webinars uh, where you will have more information about the moving process, orientations, or some of those other uh, types of questions a lot of people have. So we, we, we have staff present, and I do want to acknowledge them and thank them for being present. We have Anu Mechison, who's the doctor of operations, uh, the, sorry, the director of operations in uh, student affairs and is able to answer so many questions about what's going on in terms of moving, etc. Uh, we also have uh, Bob Samuels, who is the executive director of health and wellness, and has really helped us uh, navigate so well the uh, you know COVID experience uh, this past year and keep uh, such a low, low percentage of uh, COVID cases on campus. He is also able to talk more about how our health uh, center has uh, changed to be able to include a much bigger focus on wellness in addition to health. So if you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to um, ask him as well. But uh, now, uh, with no further ado, I will move on to the Q&A section. And uh, I will uh, read the first question that uh, was asked. And this is a question for Anu. It is from Susan Lee. Uh, Susan shared, my son registered to come to school on February, on September 3rd. Can we send the luggage to his dorm uh, on August 31st? I know that has been a question that a number of parents have asked about uh, sending packages or luggages ahead of time. Um, yes, and I would actually recommend that, especially for incoming new first year students, that you send your packages ahead of time. I will post the link. It is on the family site um, under new families for mailing and shipping. There are specific um, shipping labels that you need to print out. Uh, we lease a uh, UPS store to hold all of our packages and bring them to um, up the hill because RISD is located on a hill. So we have um, the packages delivered to uh, where the first year students are living. So um, you can actually ship the items now um, if you are ready to ship them. And I would actually recommend to try to do it sooner rather than later, uh, because if you um, just right now, there may be some shipping delay. So we don't want students to not have their items for fall. So if you know what you need to purchase, go ahead and order it, have it shipped to um, the UPS store. And again, I'll post the link shortly um, and that will be available for you to pick up during move -in. Thank you, Anu. Um, let me see. I know there was another que another question for you. And that question is from Karen Talbot. How do you know how and when you can help uh, your student move in? 
Yeah, that is a very good question. Um, we are uh, finalizing and still hoping for a near normal se um, scenario for the fall semester. Um, the official announcement, um, depending on vaccination will be coming out in August. And we also plan on hosting a webinar for families and students um, the week of August 16th. We are still finalizing the date and the webinar will really be to um, outline what movement protocols are going to be like. Um, like I said, we are currently very hopeful um, that it will be near normal, uh, which would really mean that students and families will be able to move in um, as they traditionally have. So you would be able to help your student move into their residence hall uh, without really any restrictions. Um, uh, that's again, currently the hope. Um, Bob, I don't know if you wanna to add to that, but um, we're still finalizing this information and we will share this in August. Yeah, I think that's, that's good right now. Thank you, Bob. Bob, since we have you on the spot, would you want to say anything about, you know, how students can access the health center? Well, we're downtown now on um, 72 Pine Street um, on the second floor. And this um, is a new integrated suite with a health education and um, counseling and, and psychological services. So we hope to have um, a much um, cleaner connection and ways of supporting students, both psychologically and physically. Um, it's a bigger space than we had before. So it's a little bit of a walk, but um, that's also healthy. Um, but in general, um, we, we have more um, exam rooms, more providers, and um, are ready to greet you and keep you healthy as you uh, continue and start your uh, RISD journey. Thank you, Bob. And I have to add, in addition to it being healthy to walk, it's also a beautiful campus. So uh, it will be a feast for your eyes, no matter what, even if the, <laughs> the walk is longer. And now I'd like uh, to ask our panelists to uh, answer Amadi Williams' question. Uh, Amadi has asked any fun food restaurant suggestions for eating off campus. I would love for you as you answer those questions to also mention your thoughts about dining at uh, RISD because I have heard that uh, I have not tried it myself yet, but I've heard that dining at RISD is uh, also very good and a great experience. So who wants to volunteer to speak first from uh, my panelists? I can go. I just, well, I will speak to the, the cafeteria. I forget what it's called, but that, that's right kind of in the main area. Um, is amazing. I mean, it's a lot better than what she what she'd be getting from me at home. So I was when I was there, I was like, wow, this is stuff. This is just uh, so many um, options, and you know, in terms of what your dietary requirements are. Um, so I was really kind of impressed by that. Um, there's a restaurant, and I, this is not going to be helpful because I can't remember the name of it. But um, I'm going to chat. I'll put it in the chat if I remember. I'm going to look at my map. But there's a great. Um, uh, I think it's. I think it's a. Thai restaurant. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll add it to the chat, but um, that's a great question. Is it, um, to Jen's, is it Pecoron? Because no, it's not, you know. it with a D. It's Den Den. That's Den Den. Yeah, so it's not, it's not Thai, right? <laughs> no, it's Korean. Yeah, that is, that's great, that place. And it is delicious. I can, I concur. I do too. <laughs> and very close to campus. Anyone else wants to share about uh, favorite restaurants maybe? I had to look it up to make sure it's still open. I mean, it's still there. It's Brickway on Wickedon. It's like a cafe brunch place that I like when I was there. Thank you. Jim. I can put it in the chat. Okay. What about Vedika? Any spots that you are currently visiting when you're not cooking yourself or getting one of your classmates to cook? Yeah, Denden Den Den is awesome. Um, Brickway, is still, Brickway still exists. It's really good. But other than that, I think the Met and Portfolio, both the RISD dining halls, um, have very good food. Um, and um, you can like meal swipe in and out as many times as you want. And um, again, as um, Jen mentioned, they kind of take care of all your dietary restrictions. Um, but another restaurant that's really good is Mills Tavern. It's like a tavern. Um, yeah, that was just my recommendation. <laughs> 
That is a great restaurant. And I have to say that uh, uh, RISD and Brown are very close together. And there is uh, a street called Thayer Street where there's a number of little restaurants that also might not be quite as expensive and are very quick. You can come in and get a slice of pizza or get um, Chipotle or, you know, a number of options on Thayer Street and the same on Wickenden, which is another street that's very close by with a number of coffee shops, etc. cetera. Uh, also, uh, um, I, yes. kind of going from that, uh, I got, uh, we used to get like uh, free bus passes with our RISD ID. So you can just take the bus to, to Thayer. It's like one stop from the main RISD campus through the tunnel uh, or take it to Wickenden, which really helps in the winter. Thank you for bringing this up, Zach. That's a very good uh, item to bring up. And also uh, it makes me think about RISD rides. And I don't know if any of you has had an experience uh, taking uh, RISD rides, but it is a, it is some, it's a bus that can take you if you call at night, you can be picked up at different spots and brought back to campus. Uh, it's very convenient to have. I'll just bring some old school into the conversation. Vedika mentioned swiping cards. Um, back back when I was in school, uh, they took a Polaroid picture of you and put a slide. We, and we went to the cafeteria. You took it from the inn to the I ate, and that was it. So that's how it was back in the eighties. So it has changed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I will take on one of the next questions that's actually about uh, parents coming to campus. And this is a question from Jay Unica McIntyre. Will there be a welcome location for parents, families in September? Um, and indeed, as part of the moving process, we are putting together some content for uh, family gathering. Uh, we will have, um, uh, as part of the orientation uh, your student is engaged in, you will also be able to attend some sessions, but uh, my office, the Office of Alumni and Families Relations is also planning uh, a booth uh, during a resource fair on Saturday, September 4th, I believe, as well as a wine and cheese opportunity in the afternoon for families to get to know each other and uh, mingle. Hmm. Uh, another question that came from uh, Sean Frazier, which is, uh, first, thank you for sharing all of this, uh, speakers but also what has been the biggest challenge for students in general at RISD? I thought that, that maybe I could mention uh, this and bring it to all of you to, uh, to share maybe one challenge you had during your experience at RISD and how you were able to overcome it. Uh, I know I'm kind of putting people on the spot. Maybe as you think about it, I will mention that I've heard from parents uh, that sometimes students have uh, difficulty with managing the workload. And we have uh, resources available in terms of that. Uh, we have our Center for uh, Arts and Language that can help the uh, students uh, organize their time. And uh, it's been very helpful for a number of people I've spoken to, and I highly recommend it. Uh, so that is my recommendation, even though I'm not a RISD alum. Can I ask any of you to share one challenge and how you have overcome it? I can start. Um, um, Thank you, Vedika. I came from a very tropical place in Singapore, um, so I wasn't really used to the cold. Um, so my only advice would be you need like warm stuff because it gets really cold in the winter. Um, so that's one thing that took a little bit of adjusting for me. But now that it's been a three, four years, I've kind of adjusted to that. But for those of you coming from California or not in the United States, um, a warm jacket and some woolies is what I would recommend. Thank you so much, Vedika. And I do want to mention as well that uh, we have a list that we provide to incoming families in terms of what are some of the, of the things we suggest that uh, you should pack. Uh, so I would, I think we can put that list on the chat for you as well to take a look, but it is also available when you are registered to attend this webinar. 
there were a number of links and one was what to pack and what to bring. Um, so I definitely recommend taking a look. Also part of the orientation is uh, taking students to places where they can uh, buy some bedding, et cetera. But I know some students bring their own sheets ahead of time. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to talk about uh, experience with bringing things uh, in addition to a challenge that you have faced during your time at Dresden. I'm piling things up on your um, to-do. I, I guess I can go. Uh, some, I think I'm the most recent alum grad. Um, for me, one of the hardest things was managing time, but not like a, a lot of people are kind of concerned about the workload for me as kind of like piling on all of the extracurriculars that I wanted to do um, and just like not really taking on way too much uh, that I probably should have like not taken on. Uh, and instead, like focusing more on like uh, a smaller set of things, but focusing much harder on them. Um, yeah, definitely stressed me out a lot sometimes being like part of like five different like student groups at the same time. Um, so really, it's just kind of understanding how you uh, how much you can take on and not just pushing yourself, even though you want to be part of everything because everything is super cool uh, and there's some exciting things going on around campus. Um, it's just not physically possible. Um, uh, and in terms of like moving, I know um, m like my parents, I was an international student. So like my parents, uh, by that I mean, I, really my mom ordered a bunch of stuff that just arrived there for me. So uh, I didn't have to get like bedding or stuff like that. But we also took advantage of the shuttles to go to like Bed Bath & Beyond at the mall so I could pick up some extra stuff. Um, and I think the first year is definitely the hardest because uh, in the following years, uh, you can do storage um, or live off campus. So that means you don't have to really move all your stuff again. Um, and usually with storage, they'll like deliver it uh, to you uh, on a specific day or it might even be waiting in your room for you when you arrive. Um, so yeah, really the first year is the hardest because you, you're basically starting from nothing. Um, but yeah, you'll eventually start to accumulate stuff. Um, I also got a lot of st stuff secondhand from older students. So um, I didn't really need to start off with like everything and anything that I might need. Um, because as like the year went on, people would be selling things that I would just buy, um, or I bought stuff uh, for my sophomore year and, and kind of got by with the basics in, in freshman year, especially since uh, the freshman year dorms, at least for me, were the smallest rooms I had, um, and they were also shared, so uh, it, it helps to not have too much stuff. Thank you, Zach. Anyone else wants to share? I guess I can share more, like, practicality of it. I think one of the challenges I faced when I was at RISD was the tuition aspect of um, like affording RISD and all that. And I think one thing I did was um, there are tons of scholarships that you can apply through financial aid that I did, I apply for a lot. And then there's also travel grants. So say if your studio or your class is going overseas and financially you're not in, able to provide that for yourself, there are RISD travel grants that you can apply for that can pay for your flights and stuff like that. And I also, um, was a TA for like every year for two of the classes that we had and that like you guys mentioned paid. And then there's also RISD work study, which is, I worked at the Rhode Island Historic Preservation and Heritage Commission as their front desk person doing like five, like three, three days a, a week. And that was very, like it helped me a lot during my time at RISD to pay for my living and part of tuition. Thank you, Jane. Should we move on to another question? Did I uh, stress my panelists enough thinking about uh, <laughs> a, a difficult time? Okay, I will move on to another question. I wanna be very mindful of the time as well. Uh, I know it's been one hour since uh, we started this event, but uh, 
Um, if uh, all panelists are open to it, we will have a hard stop in 15 minutes. So for us, it would be on the East Coast, 7.15 p.m. and uh, 3.15 p.m. Uh, on the West Coast, etc. And uh, for, for those who, who need to leave, we completely understand, but uh, we will go to maybe a couple of more questions. Uh, one question that was asked that I wanted to uh, make sure I responded to from Yolisa Lozano Toho was um, a question about parent activities during uh, move in and orientation. I did talk a little bit about that before, but I want to uh, let you know that uh, we will be sending a communication that will share more information about the activities available for parents uh, during uh, orientation and recommendations for activities as well. Um, I uh, would like to ask as well a question on, uh, sorry, I'm trying to read at the same time. I had uh, marked questions I wanted to answer to get answered live and then I kind of lost track. So, uh, okay, uh, there is a question from uh, Shahada Eswar who mentioned, I heard one of the speakers and I believe that was Vedika mentioned that she lives with friends out in an outside dorm. Is that possible only for non-freshman students? How does that work? I can mention that uh, your first year and second year for the most part, you have to be on campus, but you have opportunities to live off campus afterwards. Um, Vedika, did you want to mention maybe your experience living on off campus and on campus so people get a sense of the difference and how you created the group or how you picked your uh, roommates uh, as you moved off campus? Um, yeah, sure. Um, I think in your freshman and sophomore year, you have to live on campus unless you're 21 or older. Um, so I moved out to live off campus um, in my junior year. Um, and I just lived with my roommates from my freshman and sophomore year. So um, I currently live off campus with two people. Um, and I think once you like start living on campus in your freshman and sophomore year, you kind of find a group of people that you want to live with and then you end up living with them in your junior and senior and fifth year. Thank you, Vedeka. Zach, did you live off campus uh, during your stay at RISD or were you mainly on campus in the dorms? Uh, I was off campus my junior and senior year. Um, yeah, uh, I, I enjoyed living on campus uh, for my first two years because it meant that I constantly saw everybody, um, which I think is kind of the point. Um, but I did appreciate like living off campus and having like some distance away. Uh, although I quickly became like got to regret it during the winter months because uh, again, like getting back um, especially during the day, because at night, if you can call like a RISD ride or a brown shuttle, which I know you're not supposed to do, um, then it's not so bad. But during the day when those aren't running uh, and it's really, really cold out, it can be kind of frustrating to get to or and from campus. Um, but yeah, I, I think both of them are really great options. Uh, I mean, living off campus is definitely cheaper. Um, but you're kind of trading for convenience uh, when, you're, when you're living on campus. Thank you, Zach. What about you, Jane? I had a similar experience as you guys. I live off campus junior, senior, and fifth year with friends that I met freshman year. Okay. Thank you. And I have to mention as well that um, there are TAs on, I mean, sorry, there are uh, um, uh, residence hall uh, uh, leaders on uh, campus in the dorms. And those are people who will also come to you and make sure everything is okay, check on you, invite you to uh, be able to participate in uh, activities. And we saw last year, for example, that our RAs were very involved, especially during the isolation periods of the students to make sure uh, they were doing all right. But this is a role that uh, students uh, get paid to, to uh, play. And uh, it is definitely a great resource uh, to be able to go to your RA and ask for advice on things to do. Um, 
Let me see. Uh, there was a question about can students bring a mini fridge to their rooms? Uh, I would like to let Anu answer that. I know there is also the option to be able to rent a fridge, but. Uh, yeah, actually, because of COVID, we have put in a micro fridge in every single student room. Um, so you do not need to rent one or purchase one or bring one. It's there for you and ready for you to make some popcorn and hopefully not burn it. And I have to say that I have burned popcorn when I was in a dorm and the smell would not go away for a long time. So don't set off the fire alarms. Don't set exactly. off the fire alarms. That is that is very true, Zach. <laughs> And Especially if you do if that, you it's better. Less. Yeah. Um, let me see. There is a question from Christina uh, saying, I may have misheard from uh, somewhere, but is there transportation to New York on weekends? Uh, I don't know if you have more to add. I know that there is the Chinese bus, which is a very cheap bus, a $2 bus that uh, a lot of people can take from Providence to New York. But is there anything organized for? RISD specifically? No, there is not. Um, but the Peter Pan bus is, um, again, it's it's kind of in the middle of campus. It's on North Main Street. So it's easy for you to access. If you wanted to take the bus, you could also take the Amtrak, Amtrak train, which is a short walk from campus. Um, by short walk, it's probably five to 10 minutes, depending on how quickly you walk. Um, so students have certainly done that, especially students that are working on some projects and looking for some kind of new um, inspiration. Um, so that, again, easily accessible. It's not necessarily through RISD unless there's, you know, a club or something trying to do that. Um, but all of that is kind of um, has been on pause for the last year and a half. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see what that is going to be like coming this fall. Thank you, Anu. And I have to mention also that Boston is very close. It is an hour away from Providence. So there are big cities, very big cities close by, but Providence has a lot to offer as well as a city. I thought I would ask maybe our panelists to uh, talk a bit more about the winter session. That is something that's very special to RISD and uh, most alumni I've spoken to have really very fond memories of their time doing uh, winter session. I know Zach, you brought it up a little bit. You also mentioned quickies, which often take place during winter session. Uh, would you all be willing to talk about maybe some highlights uh, of the winter sessions you have attended over the years? Sure, I'll, I'll begin. Um, I, I agree. Uh, winter session is a very, very special time. And I think that, um, as Vedika explained, you can do some cross-disciplinary uh, studying. If you're in graphic design, you can take photography. If you're a photographer, you can take sculpture and so on. Um, and in my years there, it was capped off my senior year with doing an internship in Manhattan during that winter session period. And so a lot of my classmates took advantage of that time and took internships that then led, in some cases, to bigger and better things. But I, I think, at least when I was there, I think that was only available to go off campus for seniors, now, I, it may be different now, but uh, winter session is very special and it's very creative and the, the level of stress is way down and everybody can really just exhale during that period and find something, uh, find a whole other art form to love. Yeah, I, I'll, I agree, like winter session was really, really great. Um, I actually graduated early, so I graduated a semester early. So I was a, uh, I don't know what they consider me, I think like a spring. I mean, technically my graduation still in, uh, in, in the May of 2017, but I graduated um, early and I actually decided to take my last winter session, uh, bec um, as, as, like even though I could have done without it because it, it's just like a fun time. I decided to take like an independent study for that last winter session. Um, it, it's really like a time for you to explore and do things that you wouldn't normally do in your current curriculum. Um, like it's heavily discouraged to take a class uh, that's in your major during then. Um, and, and I do think it really helps you 
kind of think outside the way that you would normally think. It's, it's a way for you to experiment and not just get stuck in one kind of like way of working. Um, and yeah, I, I will say that the, one of my biggest regrets is not taking like a glass or ceramics class during winter session that may not have been completely relevant to like my work in graph design, but would have given me just so much more experience and just given me a lot of joy. Uh, yeah, I'm currently looking to see if I can find a glass place near me. Uh, and I kind of didn't realize how um, how convenient it was that RISD like had a glass nature <laughs> in the first place that could let you kind of take those classes. Thank you. Sam. So I think for me, winter session kind of helped me decide on my major. Like when I applied to RISD, I was thinking of doing interior architecture. So while doing my first year, uh, first winter session, I had interior architecture as the course that I took. And it turns out that I liked architecture better. And the professor actually recommended that I do try out architecture and see how I like it. So that really helped um, inform the person, like the career path that I'm down now, which I think I don't regret it at all. And then um, my senior year uh, winter session, we a friend of mine created our own independent study with a paper making professor. So we just made paper for eight weeks and it was really fun and relaxing like everyone said. Thank you, Jim. Maybe I will move on to another question or two. I know that we're very short on time. Um, Timothea Workman has asked uh, for background or an update on the search for uh, the new uh, president. And I can share that uh, we had a number of very highly qualified uh, people who applied for the position. And in the next month, uh, we are actually organizing interviews uh, to be able to get closer to uh, selecting a president. Uh, that is a update that was made available to staff at uh, this point. Um, I also wanted to um, bring up a question that Cindy Lee has uh, brought up. She has asked what programs, clubs would each alumni recommend uh, for incoming freshmen, club activities, events, specific classes, or otherwise? Uh, I know we have very little time, but uh, if uh, jump in if you have an idea, otherwise we will move on quickly to another uh, question. And as you can see, one of my colleagues is really rushing us uh, because we are running out of time. But uh, if anyone wanted to say anything quickly, maybe shout out, uh, this club was my, my favorite. I know uh, people have mentioned some clubs they were participating in as well during the session. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, the first thing is it really depends on the students and what they're really interested in. Uh, for me, I. Uh, I really, my favorite club that I probably was part of was Hack at Brown, which is Brown University's hackathon. Um, so I was helped part of the organizing communi uh, community. Um, and I, it, it not only helped me um, kind of work on my design skills because I was part of the design team, uh, but it helped me kind of meet a lot of people I wouldn't have met otherwise, met a lot of Brown students, got out of the RISD bubble a little bit. Uh, but also made, helped me make connections with like companies. Um, I met like lots of recruiters who really ended up like um, advocating for me when it, when it was time for me to like look for jobs and stuff like that. That's really how I got my first job. Um, and really just learning way more about the tech industry, which I suppose like looking for jobs in and being able to know like, oh, so this is what is going to be expected of me both in a job and during the interview process um, and just knowing what what to expect as I kind of like entered that realm. Um, so yeah, I, I loved it. We also like the organizing community was pretty close. We went on like retreats together. Uh, and yeah, it was really fun. Thank you, Zach. Anyone else wants to uh, share quickly? Uh a recommendation? 
And as you're thinking about whether you want to share, I want to mention that the photo you're looking at is a photo of RISD-Craft, which is the event that we typically hold in October during Parent Weekend, and where students or alumni get to sell some of their uh, artwork. It's a great time to buy Christmas presents or holiday presents. Otherwise, maybe I will take this one last question, which is how do you know what art supplies uh, your student will need to purchase? And I believe that uh, the lists are provided by the professors, but we do have a number of um, uh, art uh, supply stores. The RISD has its own uh, art supply store that is fantastic. And there is also a store called Blitz that is very close by where you can also uh, get your supplies. So uh, you don't really need to bring uh, supplies from home to Providence. And now I would like to really thank you, thank everyone who has uh, joined this webinar um, and asked such great questions. I want to also say a big, big thank you to uh, all our speakers, uh, Jen Perini, Jane Huang, Jeffrey Cohen, Zach Deocadis, and uh, Vedika Kushalani for sharing their experience. Big, big thank you also for my colleagues who uh, have helped answer some of the qu your questions. Uh, Anu Mishison and uh, Bob Samuels. And also this would not have been possible without uh, Mariam Han and Maria Xiao who were behind the scenes to be able to make sure that all the uh, slides were moving forward and to put in your registrations, etc. So uh, a big thank you for everyone who has helped make this uh, summer welcome in an event. And I do want to say finally that we will be sending out an email to people who have attended or registered for these summer welcomes and the webinar will have a few questions because we want to know how to improve our events. And we will also be sharing links of the recordings. So um, otherwise, I just want to say, uh, we can't wait to see you in the fall and enjoy the rest of your summer. Uh, feel free to reach out to uh, families at RISD.edu if you have any questions uh, as well. I'd be happy to answer those as well. Okay, bye.